Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in the Scottish borders with David Virtue on COVID control. Plus Richard Atkins reviews a semi-auto from Beretta, the A300 Extrema. David Virtue has taken a team of clients out decoying in the Scottish borders. Both Pigeon and Crow have been hammering these spring barley fields. The weather is extremely changeable, but the wind will help to keep the birds moving. Well, you watch the field after it's been sown and uh, it usually takes a a day or so or a couple of days for the pigeons to actually find it and get onto the feed but once they're on it to feed you need to be on there within 24 hours really because they'll, they'll, they'll just feed on it and then they'll just disappear and you've got one or two fields back up really that's fallback plans if, if, if that field's not working you need to go on to the next one and you sometimes have to move once or twice in a, in a, in a day at this time of year where if you're shooting harvest at stubbles August, September the pigeons are generally coming to field for two or three days, four or five days at a time, and you've got plenty of time, you've got all the time in the world to watch the field, make sure they're flying to it, and then set up and shoot it. But just now, if they come onto a field, uh, there's, there's very little left on the top grain anyway, on, on a spring barley field, so they can clear it within a day, sometimes less, you know, sometimes a few hours and they're gone. It can be blue one minute with pigeons, and the next gone so it's it's difficult it's a challenge but it's it's a good challenge and yeah. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't that's 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 pigeon shooting eden stakes out another field to cover more ground with byron pace manning the camera well it was a different part of countryside for us uh we hadn't really been down there before much more rolling and things like that a lot more birds than what we're used to as well flying about uh and not great weather either uh we turned up and it was mm, quite still but uh miserable rain it's steam coming off that field. we set up our decoys and and all that sort of thing we didn't have much time to check out flight lines but david helped us with that obviously uh so we we stuck off our our, our hide and our decoys and not much was happening uh not much was coming in we heard plenty of banging going on at the, the other guys but uh so the first the first place we sort of thought was a bit dry so we we packed up and moved on to a second field the lads are still getting shooting there then? It's, it's, just, it's just started to pick up again now. And there's three or four hundred in that field just there. Is it really? We look at it, I mean there's a lot in here too. I think they're everywhere. You just see them see them there. There's there's a lot of stuff been sown just this last week and that's what they're all working. There's just pigeons and feeding everywhere. It helps at least the two or three shooting today, that'll keep them, you know, moving. Oh, it's just those were shot there yesterday. They might be a bit wary of that yeah. corner. I would, I would, I would always pick a fresh spot, a fresh field, if you can, and do that. You know, I think he, here looks good. Yeah. I mean, we saw as soon as we arrived here, we saw so much more than we've seen all morning yeah, yeah, yeah. the other place. But yet there was nothing on there this morning. No, nah. not a pigeon. Well, if you can get along and you could drive right down that grass tail here. Yeah. yeah, and then just walk around the corner. Yep. Well, these ones have been shooting today have been all spring barley fields that have been sown and probably just sown a day or a couple of days maybe three days yes it's difficult this time of year i mean you can have the field blue with pigeons but actually getting them to come back in or, or if they're a lot sown they'll just move from one field to the next to the next so you've got to try and get your pattern right and get into the right bit and 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 you know as i say hope that the, the weather's on your side as well then the sun started to come out, it got a bit better, the birds were moving a bit more. Uh, the, still, the pigeons weren't loving our decoys though, don't know what it was, probably maybe the, the wetness on the plastic deeks, it was 
shining a wee bit too much. That's three pigeons in a row. Even as the pigeons start to come into the deeks, disaster strikes. Eden's semi-auto jams. Eden, why the glum face? <laughs> What's that? Why are you intently looking at your phone, looking for answers? So you shouldn't buy semi-automatic. No. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with semi-automatic, it's just your semi-automatic. So what are you shooting with now? Your trusty old... Maruku of one under. There you go. Now, if you can dry your eyes, we can get back to shooting. That's the first lot of birds that have actually come into the decoys properly. You had a magnet out for a while, but we took it out. Uh, yeah, I think it was going a bit slow. I need to try and speed it up. Uh, David thought it was, going, it was probably pushing them off a bit. But uh, the crows were coming in quite nicely. They were quite inquisitive, and it was nice to use that crow call. <laughs> Eden and Byron aren't the only ones to pull in the crows to the deeks. The other guns on an adjacent field are making a respectable bag of the Corvids too. David lets us in on the secret to his successful Corvid control patterns. I had some of that, those silly socks with the, that UK shoot warehouse, they had crow ones and they have been working well just in the spring and the, the crows have been decoying well into them. Other things, as I say, the magnets, you can try them to start with in the spring of the year, but I, I find they work well at harvest for a lot younger pigeons. But this time of year, yesterday they worked, today they didn't. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've got to try it. You try it to start with, if it looks like they're not working, pull it in. And even the flapper, if it's not working, pull it in. And why are they so much uh, more weary and flighty at this time of year? At harvest, it can almost be too easy sometimes. Uh, yes, but at harvest you're dealing with a lot of young pigeons. You're dealing with all the pigeons that's bred from now right through to, 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 to July, August and still breeding. Now, this time of year, uh, in March, April, it's generally all old pigeons you're shooting. Maybe one or two youngsters is born, but all educated pigeons that have been through the mill last year and probably been shot at. Uh, so they're just a bit more wary. And and, and 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 you know just a bit more they know what they're on they know what it's about uh, i know if you've got guys there that maybe haven't done a lot of pigeon shooting which some of these lads hadn't done a lot of pigeon shooting if you know they're, they're firing at them a bit late or whatever all you're doing is is educating those pigeons so those go away and 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 are wary the next time they're coming into decoys or a magnet or a, or a flap or, or anything like that but you just got to try everything each day and 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 different patterns work and uh, other ones don't but you know as i see some people the, the crows were decoying well today mm -hmm. and then another person two fields away the crows were in the decoy but the pigeons would decoy mm -hmm. and you know there's no rhyme or reason to it but you, you try different things yeah in the end it was an all right day it's like just under 40 i think our bag was so so yeah quite happy with that head down again soon Eden finally getting to grips with the Covids there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Executive Chairman of the Countryside Alliance, Sabani White Spunner, has resigned from the Lead Ammunition Group following what he called abuses of process. He resigned in protest after the circulation of an unapproved report, which the majority of the group had no part in drafting. He said the report was presented to the group as a fait accompli, adding that the Countryside Alliance would not walk away from the lead issue and he would continue to consult with the shooting community on how best to proceed. It's just over three weeks until the nation's favourite sporting competition, the Clay Shooting Classic, taking place at Windrush Shooting Ground on the 24th to the 27th of June. Big names such as Ed Solomons, John Lee and Mark Windsor have already booked their places and you could join them. There's £35,000 worth of prizes to be won, including Zolly and Hatsan shotguns, Shadit cartridges and clothing. 
An added bonus this year is the return of the Classic Sport Trap, a 100 bird competition running alongside the Classic Sporting with £4,000 up for grabs. Enter the Sporting and Sport Trap by calling 08448 269 270 or visit the website on screen now. The 17th annual Kriegoff DTL competition results are in. Ian Malarkey beat a host of big names to take the top spot for the second year in a row. With a score of 597, he won himself the grand prize, a Kriegoff K80. Runner-up Nigel Chapman took home £1,500 cash after finishing one point behind Malarkey in the final head-to-head shoot-off. The prestigious 200-bird shoot will be back next year. Read a full list of results in the next issue of Clay Shooting Magazine. The search is on for Scotland's best young gamekeeper. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association is once more awarding the Young Gamekeeper of the Year award to an individual who has excelled in the early stages of their career. Nominations for candidates must be received by the 17th of June and should be sent to the SGA office or to the email address on screen now. And finally, Blaze Publishing is launching a new shotgun shooting magazine for bird shooting, iShoot. Following its successful introduction last year, the magazine will expand by merging with Modern Gamekeeping magazine and committing to a monthly frequency in both printed and digital form. iShoot will include articles of interest to game shooters, wildfowlers and rough shooters as well as gamekeepers, while offering digital enhancements and video content. Find out more at iShootMag.com now. That was the Shooting Show News. Here we are again at uh, Park Farm Shooting Ground, Ombersley, and we're testing the Beretta A300 Extrema gas-operated semi-automatic shotgun. Well, we've got a, a, a composite stock, as you see on here, which is a very strong and uh, sturdy, weather, weatherproof, so it can be used under all manner of conditions. It's fitted with um, a kickoff pad, so within there is a, a, a compression system behind this rubber butt pad to control the recoil of this gun. Because it will uh, chamber quite heavy cartridges, you need a fairly substantial recoil reduction system and they seem to have incorporated in. The, the trigger guard is also quite a, a good size so that you might you might be wearing gloves on occasions when you use this sort of gun. Guns that can take three and a half inch cartridges might be used on the foreshore. So uh, early in the morning, you'd want your gloves on. A, a fairly tight radius again for, a, for a, a game or general purpose gun. So even my quite small hands, trigger finger falls quite comfortably onto the trigger. Quite a reasonable shape. No palm swell, but you, you wouldn't expect that. Uh, but it it drops on there comfortably and the trigger pull is comfortably under five pounds about under four and three quarter I think feels quite reasonable this gun is obviously built to fulfill a number of purposes uh, it's not necessarily a specialist gun it's more uh, something that you can use in a number of roles and we say that because it's chambered to accept uh, two and three quarter three inch and even three and a half inch cartridges well that's that's quite a that's quite a heavy payload sort of thing you'd have at uh, wild, wild fowling and, and high geese and that sort of thing which some people do some of the time but you wouldn't be doing all of the time and this gun offers the versatility as we've proved today of firing um, standard 28 gram clay loads as well um, we have put uh, 35 gram loads through it to feel that how well the recoil reduction system works and uh, even though I'm relatively recoil sensitive I, I, I found it uh, surprisingly comfortable. This isn't the sort of gun to carry uh, embellishments as such because it's it's built for practicality and to fill a number of roles. Um, you're not going to be worried about scratching it. It's, a, it's hard to scratch and even if you did you won't cry too much. It's not like scratching a piece of grade 5 walnut so it's more for practicality uh, you know the matte black of the action and the matte black of the barrels 
stopping the glare so whether you were in a pigeon hide or whether you were tucked into the tufts of uh, seagrass on, on, on the foreshore you don't want light glinting off your gun and uh, as you can see it's a fairly matte finish all round so it's built for practicality not embellishment and uh, and that's fine for the style of gun that it is it's got the um, Optima style flush fitting chokes uh, so you can interchange from a, a low choke you just get three with it I think it is uh, but you can uh, get more if you if you require the full range but depending on the distance of the targets and whether you might be using steel shot if you're on wild fouling you would you would have to use a steel or a non-lead cartridge so uh, they, they give pattern differently you have that option by easily interchangeable chokes the reason for this and we can look a little more closely at that in a moment it's the venting for the gas system because it's designed to handle such a range of cartridges and as I say as we as we have proved it's worked very reliably with 28 gram clay cartridges on here which is good but when you get bigger cartridges heavier shot loads get a lot more gas required to put a heavy shot load out <coughs> there's a, a self-regulating piston uh, inside with a valve that vents the gas and it's got to go somewhere so they've deliberately put some forward facing vents on there so the gas can just vent out of the front of the uh, fore end and here we have the gas piston which sits within this cylinder that is attached uh, to the barrel and there will be vents allowing the gas from the fired cartridge once it's got to this point along the barrel some gas will be vented and and operate these rods when the bolt is forward as fired the piston engages the front of those transfer bars will apply an impulse of energy which will cycle the action but when you've got a powerful cartridge in here this front gas valve system comes into play and so it only uses the amount of energy it needs to cycle the action and with a say an ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half, whatever it might be, a magnum load, more gas will be automatically vented out of there so that it's not overly uh, uh, hard working the, the, the action. So it, it, it's self-regulating and it's also apparently self-cleaning. We don't see an awful lot of, of mess in there for a, for, for a gas gun so it's a, it seems to be keeping quite clean too. It, it handles really surprisingly well. I say surprisingly because one imagines a gun chambered for three and a half cartridges. It's going to be a little cumbersome and maybe hard work. And it isn't that at all. The weight is not excessive. Even the action size, remarkably, they've managed to keep it surprisingly close to what it might be for a conventional two and three quarter or three inch gun. I don't uh, know quite how they've uh, achieved that. But the end result is a gun which is a reasonable balance. Uh, obviously that changes when you've got cartridges in there, but it's uh, quite light. It points, it points out well when you're in a field situation, be it pigeons or something rather more demanding, like a, a, a very high goose with your magnum loads in. I, I see no reason why you, you, you shouldn't settle in quite well. You can feel... Uh, quite at one with the gun and I, I was surprised how, how well it, it handled. So if you're a one gun man or, or looking for something versatile to add to a, a, a another gun you, you might have then uh, it, it could fulfill a number of roles and, and do them quite well. I was quite surprised how well it handles honestly. It's uh, finish uh, and, uh, and its capabilities, its specification <laughs> extends that versatility by the ability to fire full magnum three and a half inch loads on those occasions that you might wish or need to but in a gun that is not overly large even the action is quite scaled it's still a very manageable gun to fulfill a number of roles so yes Beretta have uh, excelled themselves with the uh, versatility Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque.
looking after your sport, looking after you.